So I've just opened up an image I got from Unsplash. I'll leave a link in the description to all the images I use. So first up, I'm gonna click the background layer, hit Control or Command J to duplicate it, just so I can sit, toggle between a before and after really easily. Next, hit M on your keyboard or click this little rectangle up in your toolbar. Draw a rectangle over the object you wanna get rid of. In this case, it's this person. Click Shift Delete. It'll bring up this little box. Make sure in the content section it says content aware. Hit OK. And Adobe's AI will do the rest. So if you deselect, you can see that it's done a pretty good job. You zoom in, it's like a little dodgy, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Zooming back out, my microphone's in the way. We can also get rid of this bottle here. Once again, little rectangle, shift delete. Okay, and it's gone. So if you toggle between the layer one and the background, you can see how it does a pretty good job. In the next image, it's this image of boats that looks like it's probably in Thailand somewhere, I'm gonna guess. So same thing, background layer, control command J to duplicate it just so we can toggle between the, um, the different states. Similar to the previous image, draw a rectangle or a lasso tool around something you wanna get rid of. So we'll try this boat here. Hopefully it works well. Now instead of clicking control, oh sorry, shift delete to get the content aware, we're gonna use the patch tool. The patch tool can be found in with the spot healing brush. So if you click and hold, it'll open up all these other options. Click patch tool. Now you bring your cursor over the object you wanna get rid of. Click and hold and it will sample an area nearby. You see how it can sort of, like wherever my cursor is, it shows in the box that I'm trying to remove the boat in, if that makes sense. So pull it to an area that should be able to blend a bit nicely, for example here, and let go and that's it. So you can sort of see the outline of it um, and you'd probably have to tidy that up, but in certain situations, the patch tool can be quite good. I personally don't use it a whole lot, but it's just another tool that you can use. The next one is the spot healing brush. I usually use this for little small objects or fine hairs in portraits. So we could probably use it for this sign here. So you just select the spot healing brush, click and drag over the object you wanna get rid of. And it's basically just like a little content aware in the area that you want to paint over. So you've got a bunch of options in the spot healing brush. I won't go over them in too much detail, but you can use the content aware, the texture or the proximity match as ways to fix the image. So if you get a really bad result with one of them, toggle the type and hit you know, texture or proximity match and see if you get a different result. Content aware is all I use um, because it's been really good to me. But in certain situations, you might need the proximity match or something like that. And the third image, once again, we're gonna duplicate the layer. So we're gonna try and get rid of these berries that are outside of the plate. So I taught you about content aware fill in the first image, but there's another option you can use with content aware to make it a bit more advanced. So for example, let's do this one. If I just use content aware fill, see how good it goes. See, it's not the best. If you zoom in, you can see it's trying to sample from areas that I don't want it to sample from. So you can tell a, uh, tell Photoshop what you do and don't want it to sample from. So if I go Command Z to undo it, I'll just take a bigger selection like this. If you go up to Edit, Content Aware Fill, it'll bring up this full Content Aware window. So all these green areas are areas that Photoshop is going to sample to try and fix the image. You can see here that where the berry is here, it's sampled from all the gray bits. But if, for example, it was sampling from all of this, it would probably give me something a bit weird. And it didn't, I look like a liar. I will remove all of this to hopefully demonstrate what I'm trying to say. There you go. So whatever's green, it will use to try and fix the area that you're telling it to fix. 
So I'll just cancel this so I can go back into it where it pre-selects everything. So edit, content aware fill. There we go. So all the areas that you want it to pick from, for example, just this gray area, you'll choose. So if there's bits that you don't really like, it's actually done a pretty good job. So I wouldn't really know what to get rid of. Maybe I don't like that shadowy area. So we'll see if by clicking and removing the little shadow, if that changes anything a little bit. Oh, there you go. And when you're happy with that, you just click OK. And it will create a new layer with that, ma not mask, that sampled area, that replacement layer. I don't know what you actually call it. I'm not a guru. I'm just figuring things out as I go along. So we'll do that with the other bits. So we'll go, make sure you select layer one, not the copy because this copy only has this square. So if we go back here, back to layer one, edit, content aware fill, it'll probably do a pretty good job. There we go, I'm happy with that. Okay, I'll quickly go through these ones. So now for this one, we're gonna try something a bit different. So go back to your layer one. And this is probably one of my favorite tools that I use for a lot of my editing. It's the clone stamp. So you can just hit S or you can click clone stamp. And what this does is you can sample from an area of the photo and then use that to paste over, an, uh, over another area, like brush over an area. So for example, I'll do a really bad example. Say I want to use some of this pancake looking thing if you hold down option, your cursor will turn into almost like a crosshair and that's choosing what you're trying to sample. So I wanna click here, so you click that. And say I wanna draw some of that up here. You can see that where the cursor is, it's giving like a, like a ghost version of the area I sampled. And as I start to brush, there's a little X down on the pancakes that's showing what area it's constantly sampling from. So it's all relative. So if I start on one side and work my way across, the X will move its way across too. And it's super handy to try and tidy up areas or remove objects. So I'll just show you how to do that now. So I'm just going Command or Control Z to get rid of that. I wanna get rid of this berry here. So I'm going to sample an area of the table, maybe here. Come over to the berry. I always make sure that my flow is actually a bit lower than that. That's just the way I work. I like it at 15% flow. I don't know the proper definition, but if I have a hundred flow, that means each stroke is basically the sampled area at full, full capacity. But if I make that 15% seems to be my go-to, I can make it really fine. So I can do gentler strokes and it, I find it blends it a bit better because there's no hard edges that can easily be seen by people. So we'll just keep going, brush it away. And every so often you just have to resample the area just so you don't go too far and start brushing in the plate or the berries. Maybe I'll grab an area around here. I'll just brush it away. Easy. So that's a quick way to do things. Um, if you want to make it a little bit better, you can, oh, that looks a bit chunky there. Um, oh, so one thing I should have mentioned with the clone stamp, the way to easily make the brush bigger or smaller is the square brackets. You can make them smaller or bigger just by toggling the left and right square brackets. So now I'm gonna try and clean this up. So I'll merge all these layers together. So click layer one, hold down shift, click the top layer. Then if you hit command E, it'll merge them all into one layer. Now what I'm gonna try and do is add the texture back to this area that in zooming in, it looks pretty shocking. You can see it's a clear square. So I'm going to use the clone stamp, sample this area because the texture is quite hard increase my flow this time to maybe 60-ish percent. 
and then start painting, brushing, whatever you want to call it. You see all those blurry bits get a bit sharper. Now I'll fix this area, same thing, sample near it and just, oh, that was bad. Just keep sampling, keep trying. If you make a mistake, just hit Command Z. Nothing's permanent. There you go, I wouldn't want some of this. I mean, it's the little things. If it was fully zoomed out, you wouldn't really notice, but I tend to go a bit overboard with my edits. If you've seen any of them, I zoom in to the point where it's all pixelated usually and to make sure that everything's tidy because you know, you post them online and some people like to criticize and pick out the bits that are wrong. So I try and always make sure it's right the first time. And yeah, so if you just a quick toggle on and off, you can see how easy it was to remove those berries. Don't know what I did in the middle, but you can see that it changes a little bit there. Anyway, that was just a quick way to do things. I'm still new at this making tutorial business, stumbling on my words, but we're getting there. Thanks for watching. If you want to know how to cut out an object um, from an image, I will link the video that I made, I think it was sometime last year, but there's a video that shows you how to properly mask out an image, um, refine a selection, and make the cut really clean so just so you can use it for composites and images like that.